What's up guys, it's Fado82 coming back at you with some Rust tips. The server is going to wipe tomorrow uh, for the Monday patch. It is Sunday, uh, not a lot of people are playing. I think they don't see the point in putting in the investment. So I figured, you know, all our items are going to be wiped tomorrow anyways. So why not, why not go ahead and put them to good use? Uh, so I decided to build kind of a sample of uh, a little base here. It's, it's a much smaller scale base than typically what you'd be raiding. Uh, but I thought the purpose would be to test some C4 with the current state of Rust and see how it works. Uh, if you guys don't know, um, C4 was recently added back into the game, into what's, what's called the new branch of Rust. Some people call it experimental, but at this point it really is Rust. Uh, the legacy branch, which was the first iteration of Rust, had C4 in it. Um, it went over to the new branch, and it took, a, took some time for them to add it back in. They recently did, and I'm really glad that they added it back in. Uh, it definitely needs some tweaking. Um, it's not quite as powerful as it was before, and there are a lot of differences in terms of how you place it and, and things of that nature. But let's go ahead and take a look. Um, a lot of guys have asked, you know, uh, how many charges does it take to get through a door? How many charges does it take to get through a wall? And all that information's, you know, pretty readily available uh, if you go on rustified.com, which is a great resource. But uh, it's it's uh, five charges for a stone wall. I believe it's three for a wood wall. Um, and, you know, it's only one for a door. And that doesn't matter if it's a metal door like this one or if it's a wood door. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in that, to be honest with you guys, because in Legacy, it, it always took two C4 charges per door. And uh, I'm finding that my base got raided over and over again, and they, they went for the doors. Um, I hadn't been aware that doors were only one charge, but uh, it's something to bear in mind. So just to show you an example of that, let's go up and place a C4 charge on the door. Uh, in the old version of Rust, you'd have to go right up to it. You'd see sort of um, a ghost image of the C4. It doesn't do that anymore. So be very careful when you're placing it, because sometimes you can't even tell if it's been placed, and it will it will kill you. It will blow you up if you're on either side of the receiving end of it, um, either side of the wall, rather. So just bear that in mind. It, the C4 now you can throw. Um, I'm not sure if I'm sold on that concept, but uh, for all intents and purposes, right now that's that's the way it's working. So let's go toss a charge on this door. You'll see that it's only going to take one charge to get through that door. And I didn't quite hit the door, guys. Uh, again, <laughs> the placement uh, is a little bit strange, and I'm not really a, a big fan of it. But one cool thing you'll notice is if you saw here, there's actually a pillar that fell off, which is pretty awesome. And uh, so it, it did some damage to the to the building, no doubt. Um, and the door frame itself is not worth as much as the wall. It's 2,500 as opposed to to 5,000. But let's place that again a little bit neater this time and you'll see that it'll take out the door uh, it might take out the door frame too there goes another pillar I, I love that I love that new uh, the new physics they added into the game it's definitely a step in the right direction so it looks like the door is still there but uh, it's not you just gotta wait for it to disappear and then you're in when you build a base too guys always always put um, boxes of doors you know in so if if by chance you do open your front door and somebody rushes it they're not gonna get in your full base right away um, I didn't put a code lock on this door when I built it because I wanted to just test the C4 on that particular door just to show you guys that it is only one charge it's something you should be aware of um, when raiding a base always go for the doors at this point it's the most efficient way I should correct that. It's the most efficient way if you don't know where the loot room is. If you can scout a loot room out and, and pinpoint that, probably the more efficient way is going to be to build up to that loot room and go straight into it. The direct path to it is, is going to be the best way. Um, I wanted to test out the C4 on the wall here. It is five charges as best I can tell. What you want to always be aware of though is making sure you're, you're, you're on just one wall as opposed to two walls. You can't really see the breaks here, um, but th this is there are separate pieces of wall here. So you kind of want to pick one and go for it. Um, as always, I hate even showing this to people, but it, it's a reality you should be aware of. The third person mode in Rust now affords you the option to kind of glide through and see what's going on on the other side of the wall. So here you can see that the, there's a pillar there, 
there's a pillar there so this is one wall section here so we'll try going through that um, and I put a sleeping bag on the other side because I wanted to see from my own uh, knowledge whether or not the C4 was going to take out that sleeping bag whether or not it was going to destroy it uh, C4 in the old game used to be uh, able to destroy deployable objects in the environment like chests and whatnot so you always had to weigh uh, if you were going to use it to get into a loot room because you might blow up some of that good loot that you're looking for so let's go ahead guys and uh, put the charges on the wall it's going to take five of them to get through the stone wall and uh, let me get out of the third person mode here so we'll put down one, two, three, four, five. That should get us through. And it certainly did. And let's see if the sleeping bag is there. So the sleeping bag is there. So that particular item is not one that's too hard to destroy. Look, it's just a couple hits with the couple hits with the hatchet and it's gone. But it's good to know that it's not affected by C4. Um, so inside the base here, this is just kind of a quick and dirty little base to test out the C4. Uh, the building cabinet's over here. Again, we never want to put a building cabinet right behind a, right next to an exterior wall. But for today, I didn't think it uh, would really be that important. So I kind of made uh, a loot room here, which is, is just, you know, a very tiny one. It's got a couple crates, a couple furnaces. And uh, let's go ahead, too, and test if the C4... Uh, it takes care of the furnaces and the crates. Let's see if they're still standing after we place the C4. So again, five charges. One, two, three, four, five. We'll step back. And we'll see if... And that pillar's just kind of standing there. Uh, again, the, the new building uh, system is much improved. So it did, guys. It did take out... I had two wood crate, two large wood storage box boxes in here before, and it did take them out, so they're gone. Um, I didn't fill them with loot. I probably should have, just to see if the loot hit the ground or if it was destroyed with it. My guess is it probably would be destroyed with it. But we can actually test it out with this crate here. Uh, I have three more charges. Um, if we use them on that wall, I believe we'll be able to, to test it out and see. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you guys is that we'll take off all my stuff, or the majority of the stuff, and we'll put it in here just to see if when that crate gets destroyed from the C4. Let me show you something with that key lock. Uh, if, it, if, it, if the items drop to the ground or if they're destroyed along with it, my guess is they're probably going to be destroyed along with it. One of the new awesome features about Rust uh, is you can actually, it doesn't give you a ghost image of it, so you're not really, it's not really telling you you can place it, but you can lock up your, your wood storage chest here. Uh, so you can throw, throw a lock on there and put any type of code on it that you want and give it to, you know, whomever you want. And um, that's a really cool feature that I like. If somebody's raiding your base, they're not going to be able to just hit E and get in the, into that. I can get into it because I, I put it on there and I have privileges to that, but typically they wouldn't be able to. Now, if they do uh, use a hatchet on that or blow it up, um, I, I believe they'll get a certain percentage of the items that are in there, but they won't get everything. So lock up all your good stuff. Um, again, it doesn't look like... The furnaces were damaged. I don't see them discolored at all from the C4, but the, the two wood storage boxes that I had right here uh, most certainly were. Let's see if the three C4 charges are enough to get through this wall, and we'll kind of place them close to where that box is, and uh, we'll see if we can't figure out just what happens to the items when a wood storage box gets destroyed. And you know what, guys? It wasn't enough to actually get through the wall, but we can now see that it blew up the, the crate, but the items are still there. So that, it, that definitely achieved what we wanted it to achieve. So let's pick up what we had, and you can see it wasn't everything that I put in there. So what drops out of that is, is, not, um, 
is not all of what's in there. So when people raid you and you have your chest locked up nice and tight with those code locks, they're only going to get a certain uh, percentage of what's in there. Um, hopefully not the good stuff. We got a wild boar out here running by. Um, out of ammo, it's his lucky day. The new shotgun I think is a nice addition too. But uh, I'm going to try to stay on topic here. So again guys, just wanted to experiment with the C4. Um, another quick tip about building bases is the stone steps here. Uh, always put them around your your foundations. They don't. There's no disadvantage. It's not as though people can get up on them and, and really get any higher under your base. They could still place C4 there or hit it with a, a hatchet or a tool to get in there. But what, what these uh, steps do is they put a barrier between your foundations and, and the steps. So if people wanted to get at your foundations to try to get under your base, which they can do, or to, to blow it up and, and cause it to fall down, um, they're going to have to get through those steps first. So it's another layer of security. And uh, right now in all my base designs, uh, even sometimes the water bases, I will put the steps on, on the side of them uh, to just kind of better fortify it. So guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, I think it you know, should be noted that everything's subject to change. It's an alpha game. With every new patch, things are tweaked. But as it stands right now, this is how C4 is working in Rust. And uh, there's that boar again. Please like like the video if you will comment if you want uh, I'd appreciate a subscription to the channel you know if not that's cool too thanks for watching and uh, please guys let me know if you have any requests on rust videos or other gameplay videos I do intend to do some other games as well but uh, I'm just such a fan of rust right now and I've been playing it for uh, since the start I've, I've put in way more time than I'd care to admit um, but yeah thanks for watching guys have a great one